everybody, Carly here. And today we're gonna to talk about railroad safety. So there are so many times when construction and railroad activities intersect. Things like inspection procedures, where you're doing land surveys, or let's talk about demolition or rehabilitation of structures that might cross over railroads or run adjacent to them. There's just a lot of different times when safety can be a really huge concern, as well as the boundaries of the railroad called the right of way. So we're gonna talk about those things today so that you can be successful when you're doing work that might be near or adjacent to the railroad lines. So I just want to make sure that we're all very clear about one thing. Anytime you're working on the railroad right of way or within a certain distance within the right of way, the railroad must be informed prior to work and everybody working on that property that the railroad owns must be trained in railroad worker safety. That's an absolute 100% across the board. When conducting any type of work around a railroad, it's critical to know in advance a few important pieces of information. Is it an active or inactive rail line? Who owns the line? And what are their specific guidelines for contractors? What are the state right-of-way regulations where the work will be conducted? And how far away from the tracks will you be conducting your work? In most instances, all work within four feet from the outer rail on each side of the track must be done only by a railroad qualified flag person or authorized railroad representative. For everyone else, this is a no work zone. All work between 4 feet and 25 feet from the rail must be done under the supervision of a qualified inspector or railroad flag person. The extent of railroad right-of-way can differ depending on location, ownership, as well as the activity on the rail. Therefore, certain types of work conducted beyond 25 feet from the track may still require advanced approval from the railroad before you can proceed. Before you begin work for the day, anytime you're working on the right-of-way or near the railroad tracks, you have to have a pre-job, pre-work conference. This would include the competent person, the project supervisor, the crew, as well as the representative from the railroad, often called the flagman or the flag person. And so this whole group of people are going to talk about the tasks for the day and make sure that we identify any situations where there's the potential to do what's called follow the tracks. So let's talk a little bit deeper about following the tracks. This is kind of sometimes a little bit of a complicated concept to understand. It's not actually that something has been on the tracks or is on the tracks, but it's any potential where there might be an impediment of railroad traffic and its free movement on the tracks. Perhaps it's something as simple as a stack of lumber. Maybe it's a stack of plywood sheets and the strong wind is gonna come in over the weekend and actually lift some of this plywood and it has the potential to land on the tracks. Another scenario to keep in mind would be if you're in a man lift basket and for some reason the boom has a failure and because of the reach of the boom, when it fails, when it would fall, it would land on the tracks. That would be considered just the potential to be fouling the tracks. It's incredibly important that everybody on the job site, not only your own crew and your competent person or your job superintendent, but also any subcontractors working for your crew. This might include someone who's just pulling up to deliver materials. They all need to be informed of where the railroad right of way is and also the flag person from the railroad needs to be informed if there's any potential for following the tracks to occur. Depending on what kind of job task you're doing is going to obviously inform the type of PPE you should wear. You may want to have um, a face shield, whether you're doing torch cutting, grinding, or welding activities. Certain respiratory protection. Those requirements should all follow in line with whatever job task you're doing but basic minimal requirements while working within a railroad right-of-way are high-vis safety gear, as well as your hard hat and your steel toe boots. Safety glasses very often will be a requirement, 
on working within the railroad properties. So we're talking now about call before you dig. Just because you're on railroad property does not mean that they are going to have all the underground utilities marked out. You still have to call before you dig with any excavation just as per normal. Behind me, you can see fiber optic line is clearly marked out. There may be underground utilities aside from that here. So don't assume that just because you see one underground utility marked out that there aren't others. Be sure to follow best practices, call before you dig. Any excavation on the right-of-way should be shored according to OSHA requirements and backfilled immediately after you're done or at the end of every day. Remember, dirt, rocks, other debris can foul the tracks and also create hazards not only for the trains but for yourself and co-workers working nearby who could be struck by a flying object kicked up by a passing train. Sometimes on the job site, you've got to cross the tracks to go from one operation to another, and there's a very specific way to do this. When you approach the tracks, you need to stop. When you're within four feet of the first track, look both ways. Make sure you don't see any oncoming rail traffic. You can cross, stepping one foot at a time over each rail. Slow, deliberate. The last thing you want to do is trip, fall, you never know what might happen. Very important to just be very deliberate about the way you cross the tracks. If you're crossing more than one set of tracks, after you cross the first set, stop again, look both ways, and proceed in very deliberate, one step after another maneuvers. As a rule of thumb, no worker should ever be within four feet of the tracks, except with an authorization of the flag person. Only cross the tracks at identified crossing locations. Also, never cross within 25 feet of standing train equipment. If you're moving materials, this is where you need to make sure that you work with the flagman to understand what the track schedule is. Every flag person on the job is going to have the rail schedule, they're gonna know to the minute what time every rail car is gonna be traveling on those tracks. If you need to be moving materials, maybe you're using a forklift, maybe you're doing something with a man lift or any other type of hoisting mechanism. Those are the type of operations you wanna make sure you schedule in advance with coordination with the flag person because very often things can go wrong and the last thing you want is to be moving materials across a live set of tracks with oncoming rail traffic. Okay, so now let's just talk about the fact that construction always involves labor, machines, and materials. You will never have a construction site where you don't have materials coming in and out. Where you store those materials when you're working near a railroad is really important. You cannot store materials anywhere where you might be fouling the tracks. You cannot store materials within four feet of those tracks. And also when it comes to the right of way and access roads, no vehicles can be parked within 10 feet of the rail tracks. That's really important to respect those boundaries. And when it comes to storing your materials, make sure that you keep them off the right of way, unless you're doing active construction activities and they need to be in that area for your tasks at hand. So let's just remember that the rail cars really stop for no one. They're on a schedule and they don't just stop because the light changes or you're in the wrong place. So being sure that you are in the right place at the right time at all times on a construction site anywhere near railroad tracks is essential to your survival. Because like I said, this rail line isn't stopping for anyone.